So if there's one thing that you could say to your future self, if you was to come back and look at this video, what would it be? Keep grinding, keep praying, and don't let nobody stop you. That's the same thing that I'll say. So if you could go back and say something to your younger self, what would it be? Stay out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, stay out of trouble. And if you could give anybody any inspiration that's watching this video, what would it be? Pray. Stay on your job. Stay on your P's and Q's and don't let nobody in your circle to mess you up. Just stay on your grind. What's good with y'all? My name is Jamani. Oh, and my name is Demorion. <laughs> and this is another episode of Soul Sit Down. Mm -hmm. How you feeling today, bro? Straight, straight good. Enjoying the day. Glad I woke up today. You know? Nah, most definitely. So, before we get into this video, I'm going to just explain to them basically how we met, for real. Mm -hmm. So, for those of y'all that don't know, which most of y'all won't, I've been knowing Marion since kindergarten. <laughs> a long time. Man. So, we we weren't in the same class, but my class was right next to his class. And we used to, my class used to go over to his class, and we used to watch the Magic School Bus. And me and bro always used to sit beside each other. <laughs> Man, yeah. what? So that's how we originally met. And then just throughout the years, we would be in classes together, and then our bond just grew from there. But Another thing I want to mention before I get in, we really, really get into the video. I want to let you know that I appreciate you for coming and sitting down with me and doing this with me. For sure. So, so the first question I got for you is, what used to be your favorite thing about kindergarten? Ooh, that's, that's on high. That's on high. I got a couple of memory. I remember. I don't remember things like that, but I remember something like uh, Favorite memory. I remember me and you used to always get in trouble with kids, right? And like when we get there, like when we got in timeout, we they put us by the door and then uh -huh. we'd be talking to each other to the crack and shit. I don't no, know. I remember I that. Was like, <laughs> and then I remember one time when it was like a what's that drill where you gotta get under the tables and stuff? The um tornado with the tornado? I think it was. Yeah. And uh we had this one dude named Joey. And he was throwing the table, mean the chairs at the teacher. Uh, that shit was funny. That was funny. <laughs> he had it. So the next question I have is: Did you you grew up with um, both your parents, like in a household together, right? Yeah. So, what was that like for you, and how do you think it affected your outlook on um, how you want to be in life? I mean. It, ooh, man, well, having two parents in the same household, you know, some days you got stressful days with them arguing and things like that. Then you know, things get too above like the serious level. Uh -huh. um, you know, things happen. Like it, it really didn't affect me. It just showed me like how I want to be when I grow up. If I get like you know, if I have kids or something, how I want to like treat them. Yeah. And things like that. When I'm like when I'm growing up to be a dad. Hmm. How I want to be with my kids and stuff. But my dad, he cool. But my mom, she like on the strict side. So it's like, I got the in between both. So uh -huh. I got my cool side and I got strict side. So it's like, I'm probably been like in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so which one did you gravitate more towards when you was younger? Yeah. Yeah. But now, a little bit my mom. Why you think now you're gravitating more towards your mom versus? When you were yeah. younger. Yeah. Because when I was younger, like, you know, I was in football, basketball, me and, me and Lloyd. So mm -hmm. it was like my dad was doing all the sports stuff. So it was like more sport thing with him. So while we doing sports, we with him more than we hurt. Uh, uh -huh. But now since I'm like out of school and stuff, like you got to work with her. And, like, so we get much closer together than with him because he's doing his own thing. Now. Yeah. So it's like that. So the next question I have for you is, what do you think was the most, one of the most difficult things you faced early on? Like in life? Yeah. 
early on. Um, I mean, it was going pretty smooth and things. But after my grandma died, that's when it happened. Mm -hmm. Some things started going a little rough. Now I'm starting to pick it up here and there. But when she died, that's it. So how did that? How did that affect you? Whenever it did happen, uh, it affected me pretty hard because, like, she it, it happened like after the day I graduated. So I'm thinking in my head and think like, like, dang, I didn't get to tell her and show me that I graduated because she used to always love to see me with well, even my other cousin. Uh -huh. Like we'd go over there and she like. She just used to say the same thing every time she see us. Like, y'all look like y'all dead and all that. So, uh -huh. Like, I, I I feel like if I went over there and, like, heard her voice one more time after I graduated, mm -hmm. and then it would have been smoother on my head. But yeah. It was like that. It made it rough. Did you grow up? Did you? Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I got a sister. Sister? Is she older than you? Yeah, by a couple months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I did know that. I'm sure. I think I didn't know that. But the next question I have for you is how would you describe your elementary school experience as a whole? And do you have a favorite school, like, do you have a favorite year in elementary school? Give me that question one more time. One more time. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> one more time. How would you describe your elementary school experience as a whole? And do you have a favorite school year, yeah, a favorite grade? Uh, elementary, it was lit. I was, you know, I, that was my bad year. Mm -hmm. I was bad in the I was always in ISS or something. No, you definitely Time did. out. <laughs> I was getting a lot of write-ups. But I said my best year, for sure, third grade. Third grade. We was lit in third grade. Nah, yeah. There was a lot of people in there. No, nah, I definitely was, though. Yeah, I, I, remember, I, remember, I remember that one day, I asked what's the name I gave her that note. She came back. Yeah, she came yeah, back yeah. to the classroom and yelled that out loud. That was that was tough right there. No, I remember that. What class? Who, who was Jones? the teacher? It was Miss Dolan class. It was me, you, Isaiah, Marcus, Laura. It was a lot of no, people. No, we definitely had a lot of people. That class was deep. Like they can stop with that. No, we definitely had a lot of people in that class. What did football teach you about yourself, and what made you start playing it? Football, I don't know That's hard because now I'm like, I don't really care about football now. Uh -huh. Football back then, I used to love it. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I don't know. I like the physical, like, the physical sports where, like, so it was like, mm -hmm. the physical. That's over there. Like, yeah. It was just physical. And I like, you know, being yeah, physical and stuff. So that's all I like that. So what would you say that it taught you about yourself? Football? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more like. That's cool with people and things like that. Oh, okay. So, what made you stop playing football? <sighs> My freshman year of high school, that's when I stopped playing. Well, yeah, yeah, freshman year of high school, that's when I stopped playing. I don't know why I stopped playing. I just gave up on football. Was it like a loss of love, like, in the, in the game? Uh-huh. Low-key, yeah. low-key. Eighth grade year, it made me feel like, like, damn, I didn't want to play that shit. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's what we did. What did basketball teach you about yourself, and what made you start playing basketball? My favorite sport. <laughs> yeah, like that. Basketball, man, a lot. Taught me a lot, you know. Playing basketball with the guys and stuff, you know, that, that's an interesting experience. Not your most definitely. And you said what they taught, taught me? Uh-huh. Cause I feel like football and basketball, like it's too complete. Like it's they both, sport. yeah, they both physical for sure, but it's like two completely different. For sure, like one sport you got you tackling somebody, you know, swinging a touchdown. <laughs> hey, that one getting a little basket. You know, when you talking stuff to somebody and you know scoring them, that feels good too. So that's why I know I, I don't know what it, it like the experience it gave me. It's just like I don't know. Nah, I feel you though, bro. So, what was your middle school experience like as a whole? Mm, middle school. Middle school was, that was straight. Hmm. You know, I, I was bad in middle school too, so. But I was straight too, so it was like, 
I don't know. Elementary school, it was good. Mm -hmm. Go to middle school, it was a different experience, but it was a great experience too at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's only nothing much. So, what was one of the most difficult things you faced in middle school? Mm -hmm. I can't remember that thing. I can't. Even, I don't remember middle school like. Right? Difficult. Mm -hmm. The middle school. The middle school. Do you, did you do you have a favorite year in middle school? Miss Kirkland class. I like that year. <laughs> what year? That was seventh oh, grade. Yeah, 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 that was the year. Yeah, Miss Kirkland class. Well, I ain't gonna lie. We our class was beating there. Beach. Sorry. I ain't gonna lie, we, we had we had we a had lot of people in that class. <laughs> so, do you have a specific favorite memory from that class itself? Nah, the only thing I really remember is when we was uh, going through the class and I got a class clown. Uh huh. I don't think I remember really. That was it. So, is there anything looking back that you wish you done differently in middle school? Yeah, for sure. Staying out of trouble. You know, that's what I regret. <laughs> Staying out of trouble. I can not stand out of trouble. Like elementary to middle to high. So, what was it like? What was making you get in trouble? I was just a funny person back then. So <laughs> I couldn't stop being funny. Uh -huh. That was just me. <laughs> just me. I couldn't stop being funny. Was listening. Crazy. How was your high school experience as a whole? I miss it. I miss it. High school. That was a. That was a. I don't like high school. High school was good. I am definitely. It was. Like, what was the most difficult thing you faced in high school? Like I said, when my grandma died. Mm -hmm. And uh, my. My dog died that I had since uh, I was in third grade. And that's it. Did you have a favorite year in high school? Every year was good except for until we got to like junior, whenever um, senior year when COVID hit. Uh -huh. but other than that, other years was great. It was good, but my favorite. Ninth and tenth, yeah. Ninth and tenth, yeah. Looking back on your high school experience, is there anything that you would want to change? Paying attention to English class. I can, man, I can stand English teachers. <laughs> well, <Wow, bro. laughs> I don't know what it was with them. I just didn't like. I didn't like them, especially Miss Olsen. Oh man, she was chill to me, bro. No, she did not like me. She did not like you. Did you have her in middle school? I had her for the, uh, what's that, 30 minutes uh, stuff we had? You know I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, what was that called? I know what you're talking about, though. That, that's when I had her. I had her for that. Mm -hmm. I think I had her for an after school program, too. It was one of those. I, one. I had her for one of those. What was graduating like for you? It was great. It was, it was like an experience to remember. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Was you was you nervous at all um, the day of graduation? Yes, for sure. It was like dang, like like you just hear people saying like you want to get to graduation, you want to get to walk. Uh -huh. Like people, some people think like they not gonna make it. That's how I was thinking until I made it. Yeah, I walked across that stage. And, Changed. It was like I graduated. So I was happy. What do you think has been your biggest wake up call in life so far? Graduating. So, what about that experience was the biggest wake up call for you? About that experience, it was like it was like time, you know, 
time for her, for time for you to get off your your behind, go get a job, start working every day. Mm -hmm. Some people like or younger than us, they even got that mindset like they can wake up, go to school. Like, we got that mindset, we can wake up, go to go work, work, uh, work to get some money, get us some clothes, shoes, and stuff. Now, so a wake up call and that, like getting up, going to work, getting just getting some money, mm -hmm. like, getting clothes and stuff. What made you start doing YouTube? <sighs> so, I gotta say, uh, when I got close to Tony, you know, uh -huh. so we probably got like close, close in high school. We all were, like we should do like a group channel because we used to all watch like a group on YouTube. We all used to watch the same group. Like, we would play the game and stuff with each other. And then we was like, one day we was like, we need to do a YouTube channel. Cause you know, a lot of us funny in the group. I am that. And like, you know, we be hooping a lot so we can create a group content. Mm -hmm. But people didn't want to do it. So I was just like, when I get my new phone, I'm what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video. And then New Year's came, dropped me my first video. And ever since I just started doing it. I like it. So, who are your biggest inspirations when it comes to doing YouTube? Like, who are some people that you've looked up to? Um, me growing up watching YouTube, I used to watch like Pretty Boy Fredo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, dang, I can't think. Funny Mike. Mm -hmm. Who else? I don't know. I used to watch all these, really, but I'd say the two that made me start is probably like Funny Mike and Pre Boy Fredo. So, I was going to do, I was gonna do uh, gaming for YouTube, but I was like, I was just going to ask you about that. Well, nah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, have you ever thought about doing gaming? For sure. But it was like, I let um, PJ and Jay. Sean, they did it first. Uh -huh. I was seeing like the numbers they was getting on their videos and stuff. I was like, this time I like people don't want to see that game and stuff. They want to see you out doing like public public things or things with the guys or with some females and things like that. So uh -huh. I was like, I'm just switching up. I'm gonna be the person to go out and do videos outside instead of inside game and trying to get views off that. So do you think one day that you will? Go back and do gaming. Yeah, for sure. And what, like, what, like, what games would you play? I get up there, two K pop and hobby on that two K, Call of Duty, GTA. Uh, any game, really. Any game. I don't care about what game I play. I'm gonna get lit. Nah, we definitely still gotta run some two K or Madden or something. Say that Madden. I play that. that all right. <laughs> but so. I know you said that you was looking at their numbers and was seeing that that wasn't really the best way to start off. So, what? How did you strategically come up with the route that you wanted to take with doing YouTube? Oh, I didn't. I didn't have no strategic like route or nothing. People were just like, basing off like what people were saying to me and what I was seeing from them doing the game and stuff, like, because we was supposed to go in as a group. Mm -hmm. We was either going to be on the game doing it or we was like, wasn't going to be on the game doing it. People was like, you funny, like, why hide your talent on playing the game instead of you being out, you know, interacting with people. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I just took that as like, yeah, I can go out here and interact with people, you know, make people laugh, make people day here and there. Things like that. So whenever you first started, were you nervous about uh, your dropping your first video? Oh yeah. yeah. So how did you push past that? <laughs> <laughs> I recorded that video, that New Year's video, right? Uh huh. And then I edited. It. So after I edited and things, I was like, I just kept asking them, should I drop it today? Should I drop it the next day? What should I drop? What should I drop? Uh huh. And I don't know what, when I dropped it. What got me past that fear when I dropped it? I seen that much just blow up, uh -huh. doing numbers. I was like, oh yeah, I'm locked in on this mug. I saw, I just kept going. Uh -huh. So, 
after I dropped it, I, I seen like the outcome that pushed me past like dropping more in that one video that I dropped. So, what's your favorite type of videos to do? I like to do my favorite videos. I like to do a lot of videos with the guys. So, like, anything dealing with the guys being in there, mm -hmm. that'd be a video. So, my favorite videos, like, vlogs, mess with the blind dates, uh, the public interviews. I got two, but I'm like easing into them. They are all right right now. But I said my two main ones I like to do now is uh, like vlogging with the guys or law dates. So, what inspiration or knowledge can you give to somebody who wants to start a YouTube channel, but they're either in their mind about it too much or they're nervous to start it or like whatever? Like, what is the best knowledge that you can give them? What's the best game you can give them? The best game I can give them, mm -hmm. the game I got, manifest, pray, and then, you know, just don't worry about what other people think. Drop your content. Mm -hmm. You want to drop, you want to make a vlog about you doing your hair, talking about how you do your hair, post it. You don't got to worry about what people think. Eventually, there's a lot of people in here. You like, a lot of people in this world, like, you put the right hashtags in the video, you want to get people to watch it. And you just keep dropping and dropping and dropping, and eventually, you know, that one video you drop, people are really gonna tune into it. Mm -hmm. so it's like YouTube, it's like a slow grind. So it's like you gotta start from doing like low numbers until coming up to a high number. Like each video on progress every time you go up. So have you has it been a time where you got discouraged with your journey so far with YouTube? And how long have you been doing it for? I've been doing it since January, so it's been like no more. Oh, September. 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 Uh, no, I'm not. Around there, I've been taking like I took a break in like a couple. Of, like if I like one month, if I'm dropping a lot of videos, I probably took a little couple of weeks off in the next month and then come back. But um, uh, what was the first thing you got? Number one. It was. Damn, I can't remember. I should have started with the first. I went to the second one. I can't remember. But is there a specific reason why you say if you are dropping heavily mm -hmm. in a month <coughs> that you would take like a little break? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the reason behind what's that? What's the reason? Uh -huh. I feel like if you give your viewers so much content, it's like, you know, people like. Dang, he dropping too, too much. much yeah. Like I can't keep uh, keep up watching all these videos. Mm -hmm. like, I, you gotta give your viewers like room to you know watch one video, then boom, you post another one, watch that video. You like you gotta give it time for the video to do like views and things like that. I think that okay, that was the first question I asked. Have you ever have has it been a time so far that you got discouraged along your journey of YouTube? Yeah. So yeah. how did you push past and to keep Dropping videos. It was like it was the time I dropped my. I think I dropped my update. My main, no. I think, oh, what video? It was either a Q and an A. I don't know what video it was, but I know one of my videos when I was started, then like lower than my first video. So I'm just like, okay. I, I'm thinking in my head like people not messing with me. Mm -hmm. So then I recorded another video. I dropped that video. That one went up. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, I see what people, I, I like when I drop some, I see what people like to watch and then what they don't like to watch. Uh -huh. So if I drop like a, a, a skatering vlog with the guys, and I see that do like 30, 35 views. Then I come back and drop a blind date and that drop like a thousand views. I'm gonna look like okay, so they not interested in with us, you know, hanging out on skating and stuff like that. So I'm gonna just switch up what we do together. Mm -hmm. Try to make a, another video like that. Yeah. So I want to let you know that, and we've talked about this, like just us, but that you inspire me. And so like, don't never stop doing what you're doing because 
not only me, but you have other people looking up to you and, you know, you're making people laugh. You're making, like, you're giving people hope they may not have that. And like I said, you inspired me to keep going because I'm seeing you dropping videos and it's like, if he doing it, bro, there's no excuse for you not to be doing it. Yeah, there's no excuse for you not to be doing it. And it's like, this is a nigga you really have been knowing since kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we don't always talk as much as maybe we should or whatever the case is. But whenever I am seeing you on your stuff, you stand constant with posting on social media, promoting your stuff. It gives me that inspiration. Like, like no matter what's going on in your life or no matter what you're doing, bro, you could be going harder or you can be doing more. Like, so basically what I'm trying to say is like, I appreciate you for what you're doing and like you're an inspiration to me as well as many other people. And to never stop doing what you're doing because it's only up from here, bro. And I like like things like that. When people like text me and tell me like things like that, I like that things like I like dang. So I'm really like you know I'm doing something right in the community. Uh -huh. But you know I got inspirational too. I got people you know around me that you know I try to case, uh, stay consistent with. Like my boy Reese, uh -huh. he be dropping a lot. He got the most subscribers out the group and watch hours and stuff like that. So I look at like. He got this many, see, he got a thousand subscribers. I look at it like, damn, he got a thousand. So, you know, I can come up, get up there with him with uh -huh. a thousand. So, you know, when he tried to get a video in, I try to be right behind him trying to get a video in. Yeah. So, it's like, my boy grinding. So, it just put like, put that toe, like, you got to grind with him. If you uh -huh. grind, then you grind. And that's what we try to do with the whole group. Because everybody that be around us, they got YouTube channels. It's just like, we try to inspire them. Cause they see us do like film videos and stuff. We try to show them like, get out here, pick up a camera. Like he got the camera, we use his camera. Pick up your phone, use the camera off your phone. Uh -huh. Just go get you a video, and drop it. You drop, you drop it. We promote it. We want to have numbers on your video, so we yeah, just sure. try to try to get them consistent on like recording and dropping. Cause eventually, like if we all get to that certain point where we, you know, getting bread off of it and things like that. It's gonna make us want to go in it harder, give stuff to the community, things like that together. Uh -huh. So we just really try to like show them that if we can do it, like you said, everybody else can do it. Like we just regular people just like everybody else. Uh -huh. so it just show us like, we just try to show y'all if we can do it, y'all can do it. That's basically it. So I think a lot of people don't understand the importance sometimes of like a team and they want to go out and do stuff by themselves, which that's, there's nothing really completely wrong with that, but like, to you, how could you explain to people how important it is to find your team and build your team? It's very important. Like, say, if you're doing it by yourself, right? You know, you don't get, some days you don't get tired of editing, some days you don't get tired of holding the camera, so it's like, you gotta like work with people, talk to people, see like you can get you a little cameraman. So that take a little, like a little uh, break off of you or holding your camera all the time. Uh -huh. or, you know, get you a little editor, edit the video. Like it's just like building your team will help you advance in YouTube so much. Cause if you got people that know how to edit, you can send them a video, edit this one, do this and that to the video. Uh -huh. Boom, they edit it for you, send it back. You got people that do a thumbnail for you. Do this thumbnail for me. Send it to them. They do the thumbnail. You post it. Like you work. If y'all work as a team, y'all get so many things. Like things done. Yeah. yeah. So, and so I remember you did the video with like King said. So like, how did like that come about? Like, and what was that experience like? Uh, how we got there? So I don't know. I was at work. Uh -huh. Uh, K three hit me up. He was like, "You trying to pop out to this?" I was like, "Where that at?" Memphis, Tennessee. I said, holy, oh, how we gonna get there? And then I was like, I can ask my boy Reese. He had probably take us down there. And he was like, yeah. So I sent it to him. He, he looked at it. He was like, y'all trying to go to that? We was like, yeah. So we just like, it was like me, him, K3. Then we got one more. Mm -hmm. Caleb, he got in the car. Us four drove down there. And like, it was, it was expiring. Like, it was like seeing the things, like, because we was already talking about doing the face-to-face -face video. So actually, like, seeing, like, that stuff, instead of on YouTube, seeing like it in the face and uh -huh. being in it, that stuff was, like, a whole different mindset, uh -huh. different change to us. So once we seen how it, like, it operated, what you need, and things like that, that just took it, like, okay. 
So we know what we need to get, we know what we need, so let's get to it and get to doing it. Yeah. So we got we found this a building, got us a little green light. We have, we didn't have exactly what he had, but we made it close to what he had and uh -huh. it turned out being a good video. So I feel like going down there inspired me because like like seeing it from YouTube and seeing it in person, that's a whole different different. It's different, <laughs> it's lit, it's like better. Do you have a favorite video that you've made so far? Oh yeah. What's your favorite video? I got I got three. What's your top three? I got the blind day I did with Jordan. Uh -huh. That one got my highest views. That's ten k. Uh, second one I got. It's really second. It's really tied. Like it's just the videos with like all the guys in it. Uh -huh. like, that's tied. Like every video you see with all the guys in it in a circle or something. Uh -huh. That's one. And then my third one. I say when I cut my hair off. I remember you and Tom are doing it for a minute too. Yeah. So what was what was that experience like? Like having your hair for so long and then cutting it. That was like I ain't a lot. I wasn't even expecting my hair to get like how it got, uh -huh. and for me to like, I didn't know how long I wanted to have it. So like me coming to this, thinking like, oh yeah, I'm gonna cut it. I was nervous. I was like, dang, I'm really gonna cut my hair. Like, I didn't want to cut it, but I was like, I feel like if I go, you know, if I cut it off, to restart, not restart it, but you know, cut it off, keep the fro for a little minute, I'm gonna get used to the fro. That's uh -huh. what I have, you know. Yeah. I like the fro. Cutting my hair, it changed. I'm like, oh. When she cut that off, it, it, my head felt lighter. Like, I was like, move my neck all around. <laughs> yeah. I was happy that one. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> And he chopped me good, so it definitely felt like I was really good. Yeah. So if there's one thing that you could say to your future self, if you was to come back and look at this video, what would it be? So if there's one thing that you could say to your future self, if you was to come back and look at this video, what would it be? Keep grinding, keep praying, and don't let nobody stop you. That's the same thing that I say. So... If you could go back and say something to your younger self, what would it be? Stay out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, stay out of trouble. And if you could give anybody any inspiration that's watching this video, what would it be? Pray. Stay on your job. Stay on your P's and Q's and don't let nobody in your circle to mess you up. Just stay on your grind. Keep grinding, keep praying, and don't let nobody stop you. That's the same thing that I say. So, if you could go back and say something to your younger self, what would it be? Stay out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, stay out of trouble. And if you could give anybody any inspiration that's watching this video, what would it be? Pray, stay on your job, stay on your P's and Q's, and don't let nobody in your circle to mess you up. Just stay on your grind. That's what motivate them. Just, just be motivational when you're doing this. Like, just try to keep your spirits up. Don't let people on the outside bother you with what you got going in the inside. Because you don't get them, you don't get them people that be like, Oh yeah, I watch your video. That's trash. Where you, you know people making fun of your videos and stuff like that. You just gotta look at it like, okay, that's the energy you want. Uh -huh. Like that love energy, that's great. But when you get that that hate energy, that makes you want to go harder. Yeah, keep yeah, dropping. Okay. So okay. I just feel like, like if you got people out there telling you you not you not a, you not on be a YouTuber, you not on blow up or none of that. Take that energy and just harness it and just keep that. Just keep that weight in. and then the day you know you got it, just let it, just let it go. That hate energy, uh -huh. bubble it. That's gonna get you up there. What's your YouTube channel? And I'm gonna also put it in the description and stuff, but I just want you to also say it on here. Uh, my YouTube is Mar Bands. It's M A R Bands B A N D Z. And y'all can go watch my videos. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And yeah. And then what's your Instagram? Because you you do a lot of previews on stuff that you're mm -hmm. going to drop and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My Instagram is not like Marion, so it's N-O-T 
L I K E Marion M A R I O N. And y'all can find y'all can type that on anything and y'all find me. But, so yeah. Again, I just wanna let you know that I appreciate you for coming and doing this video with me, sitting down, giving the knowledge that you gave and just giving us an insight into your life and your just experience as a whole. And we definitely gonna have to link up to again and sure. do something on your channel for, for sure. sure. For sure. But nah, sure. I appreciate you, my yeah. guy. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I like that. <laughs>